the first thing I noticed was the smell. Before I even got down to the shore, you could smell that that low tide stink, but magnified because there were so many dead animals already. On day one of BC's unprecedented heat wave, Dr. Chris Harley, a marine biologist and professor at UBC, took a walk down to the shorelines of Vancouver and right away noticed something was off. After sampling Vancouver, West Vancouver and the Sunshine Coast, he came to the conclusion that about one billion intertidal animals were cooked to death in the Salish Sea. You can fit a couple thousand mussels onto an area the size of your stovetop. And you can imagine how many stovetops might fit on the shore of Stanley Park, and then how many Stanley Parks you can fit onto the 7,000 kilometers of coastline in the Sailor Sea. So you very quickly start getting up to some very large numbers. Animals like mussels, clams, and sea stars can endure temperatures in the high 30s for a short period. But unfortunately, this was the perfect storm. Extreme heat and low tide left them stranded for hours without any escape. The shoreline at low tide, the rock is sort of like a car that's parked in a hot sunny parking lot. It heats up much more than air temperature. And the mussels and other animals that can't really move very much, they are the proverbial poor dog that's, that's left unattended in the car. There's nothing they can do until the tide comes in, so they're just stuck with their fate. But why does this matter? Well, Harley tells us it will have serious impacts on our water quality. Those are filter feeders. They filter all the little stuff out of the water uh, for their food. And that has important impacts on water clarity, water quality. That's the, the filters of the ocean, basically. And losing those um, could potentially impact um, the quality of the water. The good news, muscle populations usually rebound quickly. The bad news is that if heat waves become more frequent in the future, that won't be the case. The challenge is if these sort of heat waves start happening once every five years instead of once every 100 years, um, that sort of disturbance that frequently might prevent the, the mussels from living uh, at anywhere near the extent that they do now. Harley says the next steps are to take a team down to explore more of BC's coastlines and figure out the full geographical extent of the mass deaths, as well as what the future ecological consequences will be. But in the meantime, he says this is a reminder that the environment is suffering from extreme weather events.